On today's episode of Travel Paws RV, we are going to install a tire pressure monitoring system on the Transcend. Stick around. And be sure you stick around to the end for the blooper roll. Hey y'all, thanks for checking out Travel Paws RV. If this is your first time here, my name is David and I am a part-time solo RVer. Come on along with myself and my traveling companions Rupert and May as we learn the RV life, share tips, tricks, and product reviews along the way, adventure, and most importantly, don't wait for tomorrow to live life today. Here is a system that I got, the Time 8 TPMS Tire Pressure Monitoring System with the repeater. Links are in the description below for both of these. And here's what comes in the box with it. You get the actual uh, monitor itself, which is charged via solar or USB. The sensors themselves, I only have four sensors. Each one is labeled right front, right rear, left front, left rear. And you can get up to seven sensors in this system. The USB charge cable with a little 12 volt USB adapter. A little sticky mount pad that you can plop on your dashboard and then put that guy on it. I would suggest it. I have not used it and I had to step on the brakes really hard because somebody pulled out in front of me and that thing went flying up into the defroster on my dashboard and I couldn't get it until I came to a rest stop. This little tool here is what you use to open the sensors to change the batteries if need be. Little dust covers come with it as well as the mounting hardware if you're going to use the dust cover. And they give you this tiny little wrench. How cute is that? Now that we know what a tire pressure monitoring system is, why do we need one? The number one reason, safety. Safety for you, safety for your family, and safety for everybody else on the road. Having incorrectly inflated tires shortens the RV tire life. And RV tires don't really have that long of a lifespan as it is. We want to maximize our tires for as long as we possibly can. Incorrectly inflated tires, especially low inflation, will cause excess heat buildup in the tire, which will eventually make the tire fail. It could lead to an accident, God forbid a rollover, the blowout could damage the whole size of the rigs. Look up RV tire failures and see how much damage that they can cause but do it after this video. Incorrectly inflated tires will affect your fuel consumption. And I don't know about y'all, but the amount of money that I put in for fuel, I don't wanna to have to spend any more. Low inflated tires will affect the amount of weight that your tire can hold. And those are just a few reasons why you need a TPMS. I know I do it so I can keep Miss May and Mr. Rupert safe. Right? All right, one of the things that we have to do before this is going to work is we need to hook up the repeater. In my old truck, the signal from the sensors made it to the little monitor in the cab. I found the last time I took this out, I did have the TPMS installed, but it wouldn't uh, display anything. And I think that's probably because it's just a little bit too long. So I went ahead and bought a repeater from Amazon, but all it is is just a wire. On the other end, it has a little fuse. It's a little two amp fuse, a little teeny tiny one and a black and red wire to hook up to the battery. Thought I had actual clips to be able to put this on the battery. I don't, and we're leaving in the morning, so I don't have time to get it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the negative and the positive leads off and wrap them around the posts and then put those leads back on. Hopefully that will work. The function of the repeater is to pick up the signal from the sensors amplify it and then direct it using this little antenna guy here to the front to the cab where your monitor is okay so i'm going to disconnect the negative lead from the battery here for right now it should at least get me squirrel that would be rupert barking at a squirrel now we're going to do the same thing with the positive lead that's why you don't wait until the last minute to do this stuff, y'all. And put that back on there. This has a really low amperage draw when not in use. There. This should be able to reach the cab if I put it here. So I think I'm gonna put it on here. I'm not gonna screw it down permanently yet until I make sure that it works. I've already cleaned this off. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull the back off of this and then Stick it on there. As you can see, it's got Velcro. 
So I gotta set you down. And we're just gonna hold that down for a little bit. And this little guy goes here on the Velcro. Did you get that squirrel? Did you get it? Did you get that mean squirrel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully that's gonna work. This is what happens when you wait until the last minute. Actually, I forgot about it until I saw it in the box and was like, oh crap, I need to install the repeater. But we'll see tomorrow if it works. Until then. Installing the sensor is as easy as screwing it on to the valve stem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I wanted to show everybody the tire pressure monitoring system. As you can see, the big numbers there to all say 70 are the actual pressure of the tires. And those outside numbers to the left are the temperatures of the tires. You can set alarms for the temperature and for uh, PSI high and low. But I just wanted to show you what it looked like in use as we are careening down I-75. Some of the features of this system is it has a fast leakage detection. So from what I understand, if you run over something and puncture the tire and the air just kind of rushes out, it will sound off an alarm. And by the way, the alarm is freaking loud. I accidentally set the high pressure limit way too low. I noob, didn't know any better. And that thing started screaming like a cat in heat. You can also set a low pressure limit as well. The unit will turn itself off after 10 minutes when you stop to save battery life. And if you forget to turn the system on, it will automatically turn on when it senses movement. And you can also set a high temperature limit as well. I honestly don't know what that should be. So if anybody knows what temperature tires should not get above, leave me a comment below because I have no idea. Let's go over some pros and cons of the system. The pros, it's really cheap and it's really easy to set up and use. The alarm will definitely get your attention and the display is bright enough where I don't really have a problem glancing down to check out the pressure and the temperatures. The only con that I've been able to find so far is going to be for y'all that have the big rigs with tires that have a much higher uh, pressure to them. This system will only read up to 87 PSI. So finishing up y'all, I highly recommend this tire pressure monitoring system. And I do think that this should be one of your RV essential tools that you get when you first purchase your RV. Tire safety and safety in general is critical to fun, enjoyable, memorable RV trip. So I think that's going to do it for today's video, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the review of this Time 8 TPMS tire pressure monitoring system. If you did, go ahead and boop that like button. Leave me a comment below. Do you guys have a tire pressure monitoring system? Has the TPMS ever saved you out on a trip? Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And until the next video, safe travels. I'll see you all next time. This is the tie pet. Tie pet. <laughs> and. Automatically turn on when it starts. When it starts. Help. And if you. And if you. Oh my god. The function of the repeater is to pick up the signal from. What are those things called?